But traffic in New York City making its way back and forth between Manhattan and the borough of Brooklyn. And as Kevin, thanks very much. All right, David, thank you. Here are the starters for Milwaukee. Middleton and Giannis are the forward tandem. Holiday out there with Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Lopez in at the five. And for the Nets, Duran is out there with DeAndre Jordan. And it's Kyrie Irving. Then it's Joe Harris. And it's Harden in at the point. Kicks it to Duran. Takes a three. Offensive rebound. Nets. Harden has a wide open look. That one a tad offline to the right, but drops in for him. What a pretty look. DeAndre Jordan, to have that kind of touch on your passing, such a quality piece for a big man. It's Adetokounmpo on the wing. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. And Doris tonight, two experienced teams will be battling. Well, what you come to expect with experienced rosters are excellent defensive rotations, game plan, discipline. These guys know how to play the game. So let's see how this plays out. The wide open look here for Holiday. Three pointers off the mark. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Passes to DiVincenzo. And down it goes, jamming that one home. Savvy play from Holiday. Quick thinking helps him get the ball to the wide open man. Harden outside. Lays it up and banks it in. Harden's got his second basket of the night. I tell you what, you better watch out, fellas. He is on fire here today. The pass to DiVincenzo. Left side out of the Kumbo to the inside. Here's Middleton and a great assist by out of the Kumbo as that one goes in. And with great positional size, Middleton knows how to do damage down low. Irving with a clean look at three off the mark. Bucks have gone three of four from the field to start out the game. Here's Holiday, and that one, good. I hear this guy reads situations so well, and he knows how to execute. For Brooklyn, they've gone two for four from the field so far today. Here in the first, just under two and a half minutes played so far. And a staple of Harden's attack. Sometimes it seems he's better finishing through contact on the drive. And here's Giannis on the wing, DiVincenzo. Stolen by Harden. Three on three. That's good from Harris on the assist from KD. Listen, this guy is far from just a scorer. Kevin Durant loves to share the basketball. Holiday looking over the floor. To the paint. Here's onto Takumbo. That shot is off. Durant with some nice D. Here's Harden. And Harden with the stuff. And, you know, and with how deliberate he can be, Harden still can surprise defenders with that burst, that underrated vertical that he possesses. Holiday dishes to Giannis. And it's Durant with the rebound. And, and typically he has the touch to finish when he's in tight, but not sure on that possession. You simply cannot give Kyrie Irving room to run in the open floor. This guy is a phenomenal transition player. 116 left in the first quarter. And there's the three-second call, this one on the defense. LeBach shooting their first free throw attempt on the night. And he shows the focus there, nails the technical. And really, from second-round pick to all-star, Milton's story, inspirational. Yet even now, it feels like some people continue to sleep on him. And a new group out there on the floor for the Nets. Big group substitution here for Milwaukee. Portis, he's checked in for Lopez. P.J. Tucker comes in for Antetokounmpo. Back up. And folks, the coach's challenge has been initiated for a personal foul. Post game like this, and he thought it wasn't a good call. 
And this is the time now where the officials can review in closer detail what constituted the original personal foul. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Greg, indeed, and the one thing with replay review is that when you see the slow motion replay, you really get a new appreciation for just the immense speed at which these players are moving and how fast the action really is and, and how hard it can be sometimes, you know, Greg, to, to make the right call. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined, Greg, to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. No one near him. Oh, and that one had the right spit on it, and it is good. Bucks trail by three. Two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Tucker, the pass to Portis. Back to Tucker. Portis kicks to Forbes. The Bucks working the ball around. Rocket six in the corner. Middleton with it. Nice open look, but it's no good. Maybe he rushes that just a little bit. Who knows? But he couldn't have gotten a better look than that. And still a close game as the first quarter comes to a close. Nets out in front, up by three. And we'll be back with you for the start of the second quarter when we return. Earlier on, we ran into... You know, I think the underdog story, you know, started with... And Greg playing with a chip on his shoulder has served Portis well. Some guys try to block out the haters. Portis uses it as fuel to keep achieving more. And if you're just tuning in, it's been a pretty even game through the first quarter. And looking at what we've seen so far from the Nets, what do you guys think? Well, the offense is clicking, and they seem to have seized the momentum here early on. Boy, it's been a really pretty thing to watch, executing their game plan to perfection. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter to play on the court for the Bucks. They've got Portis. E.J. Tucker is out there with Adetokounmpo. And there's Teague. And it's Connaughton in at the Patusma. Teague dishes to Tucker. The Bucks need to get a shot off here. The offensive rebound. Second shot opportunity. Used the shot fake to create the angle, but couldn't get it to fall. Irving, a good look. Got it from 16 feet. Irving's got his second bucket tonight. Well, sometimes it's about shot selection. And Kyrie Irving finds the weakness in the defense consistently. Irving against T. Outside Portis. It's to Connaughton. And here's Tucker. Back to T. Pass to Connaughton. And it's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. They turn it over. Landry Shamitz checked in for Brooklyn. Second quarter of action, about a minute and a half played. The three. Rebound, Milwaukee. And on an open look like that, he's very gifted at making the weak coverage pay. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. A new generation of players, Greg, coming into the NBA alongside your son, Cole. Uh, we've got a lot of players who I think are going to have a long-term impact on this game. All right, there's no doubt about it. Listen, I hope Cole can have the kind of impact that some of these guys are, but look at the Grizzlies. I think they got two terrific ones. John Morant has superstar written all over him. Brandon Clark probably surprised some people with his ability to have an impact, and if you look at this past draft, Obi Toppin is one to watch. This is a guy with great size and length who was a perimeter player until he had a growth spurt, so those are the types of players that I think when you combine athleticism and skill with the way the court is faced, man, can have a tremendous impact in this game. He gets that one. And now a nine-point Brooklyn lead. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Holiday, the pass to DiVincenzo. Here's Hansa Takumbo. And it's Griffin with the rebound. And so Griffin will bring it up for the Brooklyn Nets. Only giving up two points this quarter. Big miscommunication 
on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. And that's typical of this guy. He's always reading the situation, reacting quickly and capitalizing. Yeah, I mean, the ball handling and body control for a guy that's Giannis's height, it's really impressive. Shamit with it. Outside Griffin. Five on the clock. And the rejection by Antetokounmpo. And a lot of attention on Antetokounmpo's offense, but don't sleep on the D. He, he can defend every part of the court and does it with intensity. Closing in on four minutes played here in the second quarter. Here's Anta Takumbo, and Griffin sends it back. I'll tell you, this guy is doing absolutely everything he can to get himself going, but the team is struggling because he's struggling. Taken away by Holiday. And oh, here we go. Lopez has got it. The fast break chance. Deflects the pass. Here's DiVincenzo. And he finishes it off with a one-handed jam. That's a double whammy, guys. <laughs> That's right. A great defensive play, then the emphatic stump. Uh, let's see if that serves as a momentum builder. What a great sequence for this group. And another turnover here by Brooklyn. That is just a careless turnover. You've got to be smarter in those exchanges. And a new group out there on the floor for the Nets. Big group substitution here for Milwaukee. Portis, he's checked in for Lopez. P.J. Tucker comes in for Giannis under the Kumbo. Chris Middleton's checked in for Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Teague in for Drew Holiday. Boy, it'll take more than that to stop Jeff Teague. Just determined to score despite any obstacle. Harden scanning the floor. Good for the fifth time in five shots. He remains perfect. Well, everyone's seeking those high percentage looks in the restricted area. Nicely done there. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Middleton drives in. Count it. His second make in four attempts. And that was a big time finish. Middleton with the strength now to get hit and still complete the play. Harden outside. No good that time. And so we wrap up the first half. All right, David, thank you. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the third quarter. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello, basketball. James Harden was the man in the first. He had 10 points. And as great as James Harden has been, his... And that should do it. And we hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. We're halfway through the game. A fantastic game from Harden in this one. And, and you know he's going to put up points every time out. But, boy, he made it look so easy in that first half. And let's see if he continues that trend the rest of the way. He certainly has the talent and the endurance to do just that. Duran is out there with Harris. Then it's Jordan. Then there's Irving. And it's Harden in at the point. So that's the lineup for Brooklyn. Harden outside. Here's KD. The shot, no good. Some solid defense from Anadokounmpo. Here's Holiday. Doesn't get it to drop for him. And Brooklyn will come the other way. They've led by as many as 11 points. Lopez with the steal. DiVincenzo finds Anadokounmpo. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose, Greg? I'm not sure. Uh, it, uh, scene of confusion right uh -huh. there. I can't imagine why he thought it was the good idea to foul there. And Giannis throws it down. Hey guys, that's a sight we've become far too accustomed to see. Antetokounmpo throwing it down like it was just another day at the office. Irving attacking, uses the glass to finish the lane. Irving's got six. Terrific play call to give him a clean look at the rim. That's how you want to start the second half. 
Well, there is nothing better than catching a rhythm as early as possible. And boy, that's a terrific start right there. Cannot believe he missed that one. Oof, I'm sure he can either. Quick job of getting up the floor and creating early offense. You don't give the defense any chance to set up. Sometimes you just love an easy look. Here's Holiday. Here's Antetokounmpo. He has six. Nice defense from KD. Inside, Irving. Count the bucket coming off a perfectly placed assist. And now a nine-point Brooklyn lead. Boy, that's three for four this half. You like that they're starting with a little bit of extra energy. Nice. Good work defensively by KD. Not a lot falling for him in this quarter. He's got to stay aggressive, try to break through. See if you can get an easy opportunity. Some changes for Brooklyn. Green comes in for Kevin Durant. And it's Brown in for Kyrie Irving. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for Milwaukee. Bryn Forbes comes in for Dante DiVincenzo. And the basket is good. Boy, you have to be impressed with the offensive production. They have got it firing on all cylinders. And at this point, it is their game to lose. They've done such a good job building the lead. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. To halt the run. That one's good. And the Brooklyn leaders get back down to single digits on a much-needed basket there from Drew Holiday. Oh, a nifty finisher. You didn't think Holiday would back down inside, did you? Harden the pass to Brown. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Brown's got the lead up to 11 now for Brooklyn. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. That one goes in. Tucker's got his first two points. You know, we see this a lot from Tucker. Scores by overpowering the defender with his tremendous strength. And that's an intentional foul. Greg, you and I have talked about how the NBA Finals used to be tape delayed. What's the value of fans getting to see the broadcast live now as opposed to tape delayed as it was back in the, in the 70s? Isn't that a, weird to even think that that's it the is. case? I know but, it. <laughs> you know, I think, Kev, that the fans, they just feel more connected to their favorite teams, the end players. It creates more anxiety, right? Because nowadays there's nothing that can happen that you don't know about it, whether you see it or not. Uh, so live sports, especially the NBA Finals, the anticipation, that anxiety that we talked about, man, I, I'm still a fan to this day in a different way. Uh, so I can only imagine when you have a personal vested interest in the team what that's got to feel like. Edge of your seat, you're right. Pass to Portis. Rebounded by the Nets. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really, right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive <laughs> in the mid-range. Rarely the hallmark of efficiency in today's NBA, but it is on point tonight. To the middle. Here's Portis, and he banks in the layup. And, and that's got to happen if they want to have a chance to turn this thing around. I mean, he needs to just take the game over. I mean, it seems like he's been hesitant to pull the trigger. Shot and game clock separated by five. Now, here's Shamit. Dishes it to Irving. Passes it to Griffin. Yes, and it's Irving picking up the assist. And the Nets lead by 13. Kyrie Irving doing work with the pass. That's pretty. Here's Teague. And it's yeah, wow, he nails the buzzer beater. And give him credit. Good awareness of the time remaining. And to me, the way you end quarters impacts how you end the game. It can go a long way between a W or an L. And now we have a moment to uh, reveal our state farm assist of the game. And, you know, you can always count on him for at least a couple of these pretty assists over the course of a game. And this one, a thing of beauty. You know a thing or two about a point guard's job. Set the table for your teammates. Done there perfectly. 
And we reach the fourth quarter in a game that may be already out of hand. On the floor for Milwaukee, starting the fourth quarter. Middleton and Giannis are the forward tandem. Then there's Dante DiVincenzo. Then there's Bobby Portis. And it's Forbes in at the one. That one's good, and the Brooklyn lead is cut down now to just 10 points with that basket from Forbes. This is as pure a shooter as there is. You've got to stay connected or it's a problem. Now Shannon. Outside Griffin. Back to Shamit. Oh, and there's the alley -oop. No good on that one. So Milwaukee will take it the other way. Now the Bucks moving it up. And the foul is called. He intentionally grabbed him there for some reason. I don't know. Kevin, Kevin, all I can think of is that he's trying to slow the game down a little bit. Right. That's a stretch, though. Definitely a strange move on his part. And the Bucks making a change here. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo comes in for Chris Middleton. Pat Connaughton, he's checked in for Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Teague in for Brent Forbes. Teague against Harden. A nice shot by Teague. Well, I'll tell you what, impeccable work from Jeff Teague inside, showing great patience down in the lane. And here's Harden outside Irving. This one for three. And no good that time. Now the Bucks take it the other way. Last quarter of play, about two minutes in now. Portis in the post. He's against Jordan. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Yeah, good job to take it right at him. First free throw is good. Big bird substitution here for Milwaukee. Antetokounmpo's checked in for P.J. Tucker. Chris Middleton comes in for Antetokounmpo. Dante DiVincenzo. He's checked in for Pat Connaughton. And it's Holiday in for Jeff T. Harden with it. Durant feeling it out a bit. And it's in after a nice bounce off the right side. And the Nets lead by 10. And the jump shot has been a dimension of this game where they've had a clear advantage. The drive by Giannis. In attacking with all that win. When Giannis drives, he's either scoring or at least getting the foul. That's good from out of the Kumbo. Milwaukee making a switch. Lopez is checked in. And both free throws good for Giannis. For those just joining us, fourth quarter here. We're just over two and a half minutes into it. Here is Harden. Here is outside. Bobs it up for Jordan. Up high to stop the alley. -oop. Well, we've seen this one or two times, have we not? DeAndre Jordan finishing end of the alley -oop. Nice. Harden against Holiday. Shoots in deep. Here's onto Takumbo. It's hauled in by DeAndre Jordan. Jordan's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Offensive rebound. Outside for KD. Offline with his three. Bucks trail by 10. DiVincenzo passes to Holiday. I'd say everything went right in terms of execution. He just can't get it to go. It's Durant with the drive. Good. And Harris gets the assist. Harris has got three assists in the game. The Bucs have gone two of four from the field since we started the final quarter of play. Trying to get open is Lopez. Lays it up off the glass. And I really marvel at the touch of Antetokounmpo for his size and physique. That's incredible. And, and we'll just watch the clock wind down, guys, in what will turn out to be a win here for the Nets. Great, generous ball movement tonight. A thing of beauty. Yeah, a remarkable team effort. They got everyone involved. And, you know, looking back at all the contributions tonight, it was a really phenomenal all-around game for James Harden. 
This guy has been shot making all night long. He commands the rock and takes over. And if you're looking to make a big play with the pass, you've got to love Giannis. He's a big target on those alley-oop lobs. Harden kicks to Irving. We've got 28 seconds left in the fourth. From down in the low post, it goes. And you can sense that these fans, these players, they are ready to celebrate. Well, for all intents and purposes, this game is over. Just a matter of time here. Man, with that skill set at 6'11", Giannis might be the toughest guard in the league. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. There's 14 seconds left to play here on the fourth. Johnson against Giannis. And then Griffin with the dunk. Making every effort to put this game on ice. Well, just terrific teamwork. Each guy doing his part. You love what you're seeing from them tonight. And so it's Brooklyn. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. Well, folks, that's going to do it.
2K Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. The beaches of Santa Monica. And a look at the status here of both teams, injured players, and who will not be in the lineup. And with both teams at less than full strength, we'll have to see which side is able to remain more effective. So the Nets starting five. Jordan is out there with Durant. Then there's Harris. Then there's Irving. And it's Harden in at the point. And for the Clippers, we've got Patrick Beverly. He's out there with Paul George. DeMarcus Cousins out there with Kawhi Leonard. And it's Oturu in at the four spot. That bucket in in no time at all. And these teams both among the league's better defenses, Brent, with advanced stats and tracking, do you think it's getting easier to measure and quantify what goes into great defenses? I think there's technology, Kevin, that still needs to come along in order for some of the analytics guys to really truly assess positional defenders and where some of their arms and legs are that will really help them define how these defenses are impacting some of the offenses and the way they play. Here's Harden. Basket is good. The assist from Harris. Superb at finishing through contact. Harden is just so elusive and creative on those strong drives. And now just over a minute played here in the first. Here's George. Cousins trying to free himself up. Knocks it down from seven feet. And his presence as a scorer, it just has a calming effect for the rest of the team. He's a fallback option whenever they need one. Now here's Harden. Pass to Harris. Back to Harden. Six on the shot clock. Well, it's one thing to play good defense, but then to alter the shot and get the rebound, that's a good day's work. George finds Cousins. George with the ball. And it's Harden picking him up. Good work there as it goes. And it takes a lot more than that to stop DeMarcus Cousins. He is a huge presence, and he answers every defensive challenge they pose. Now here's Harden. Outside for Jordan. Irving passes to Jordan. A second chance effort. Oh, he blocked it and deflects off the backboard. Stolen by Harden. Oh, the lob to Irving. Out of bounds. The Clippers take possession. Looks like a simple play and turned into a turnover. Can't give away possessions like that. And the Nets making a change here. Green's checked in. And that was a great replay we just saw of our mobile one block. Some intimidation right away. Got to show those shooters you're going to be there all night long. Now here's Rondo. Over Green. Great D that time from Green. And that's trail by four. Basket is good. The assist from Harris. Just can make it so much easier for your teammate when you throw that lead pass that gets to him right on the money, whether that's on the run or in the shooting pocket. Here's Rondo. Pass to Zubat. Kennard for three. Rebounded by the Nets. And now they decide to foul intention. Really no idea why you're fouling in a situation like that. You know, maybe there's some bad blood between those two. A platoon swap here for the Clippers. DeAndre Jordan's checked in for the Nets. Harden can't hit. And there's a whistle that's going to go on James Harden. That is his first foul of the game. And a new group out there on the floor for the Nets. And so Cousins will bring it up for Los Angeles. Now here's Beverly. No points in the game yet for him. Here's George. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. Well, defender just a little too late in reacting. Gets a piece of Paul George, but a piece. That's not enough. 116 left in the first. Shamit the pass to Griffin. Back to Shamit. Plenty of space. Oturu with the rebound. Yeah, that miss might stick with him for a little while. That's kind of a shoot-around jumper if I've ever seen one. 
Shot from six. And Cousins gets it to go. Cousins has got his second basket of the game. Yeah, well, he's used to that right there. Cousins does not let the contact deter him. He knows it's not just one guy. It could be multiples. He's still going to find a way to score. Now, here's Shamit. Morris with the rebound. To the paint. Down low. And Cousins throws it down. And this is right around the time when one team might start to pull away. Yeah, this team is looking to add to the lead, trying to put the other team away, and threatening here. Four seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Oh, Griffin in position. That shot misses. Just doing the job on the backboard. George with no one around. Offensive rebound. Oturu, the pass to Cousins. And that concludes the first quarter of play. Clippers ahead. They're up by eight. We'll be back shortly live from Staples Center. And recently, Kevin Durant discussed what they have to fix. I think you get a lot of teams best shot. And, Greg, it's one of the great challenges of being one of the teams to beat. But that's the difference with a superstar like Durant. He can give you elite play from start to finish. Lesser guys can do that only in spurts. And thanks again for tuning in. If you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter of action so far. And let's quickly break down the game we've seen from the Clippers, guys. Well, their effort on the defensive end has set the tone for this game. The defense has been infectious here as everybody stepping up aggressively on that end. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. So for Brooklyn now, Irving is out there with Brown. Then there's Griffin. Then there's Green. And it's Claxton in at the four. And he hits it and gets hacked on the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. And Griffin, such a special talent. He connects on those difficult finishes time and time again. Landry Shamit's checked in for Brooklyn. Greg, 11 years for you in the NBA. You had to have some favorite players that you played besides and with. You know, it's a great call. And, and there were a ton of them. Uh, a, a few guys, though, will. So Gary Payton, I got a, a chance to play with Gary for a year and have known him. We, we, we used to go at it in high school. And it's really about his personality. This is a guy that constant chatter, practice on the court. That's what fed his confidence. Charles Oakley, another guy. He, he would run through a wall or through you to win a game. And then Scottie Pippen later in my career, just a winner and somebody who I competed against for many years but didn't have any opportunity to play with up close. Uh, I got a, a greater appreciation for his skill set. You can't just stop when there's a pick set up. Got to fight over it as a defender. That's one that the coaches will watch tomorrow with that player. You hate to see him give up in that situation. Here's Griffin, and Griffin slams it in. And Griffin playing with heart. Like how he slams that one home right now, dominating in the paint. Jackson passes to Kennard. And here in the second, two minutes gone by. Jackson down low. He's covered by Shamit. And he gets a lot of points right there at the rim, but the defense determined not to give up the easy deuce there. Nets trail by four. And the Croatian big man, Ivica Zubac, a big hip-hop fan. His teammates call him Zupa. Uh, <laughs> It's amazing that he was traded from the Lakers to the Clippers, so uh, still home games here at Staples Center. Quarter two and just under two and a half minutes gone by. Shot clock at five. From eight, Griffin. Up and in for the basket, number four. That makes him four for five now his skill at his size and then converting through contact such strength from the big man Leonard looking over the floor and foul on the sh and here we go with the coach's challenge not surprised in a competitive game like this and he's disputing the personal foul call
And, and I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, personal fouls can be tough. The action is so fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology, Greg. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being able to. A challenge like this is something a lot of people have been hoping for. And so the word is in. They've decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And, you know, even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call, you got to acknowledge the effort being put in to reviewing it. The double checking and the game continues on. And a new group out there on the floor for the Nets. Jordan finds Irving. Can't tie it up as that one misses. Clippers leading by three. The drive by Cousins. And it goes down two points. Cousins has got eight points. I think this is where Cousins operates best. Comfortable using his size and comfortable in the painted area. Harden outside. Passes it to KD. Cousins pulls it in. Cousins has got his fourth rebound in this one. Here's Oturu. George trying to break free. And it's the Clippers scoring again. A little awareness there from Kawhi. Waiting for his teammate to break free and then finds him. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Irving with it. Guarded now by DeMarcus Cousins. And the rejection by Cousins. And he's able to get it back. They blow the whistle just as he gets it off. That's two points with a chance for another one at the strike. For the Clippers, Mann's checked in. Arjan Rondo is subbed in for Patrick Beverly. The Nets have gone one for one, making their previous attempt at the line. Well, there is continuous energy in DeAndre Jordan's play, really hustling on both ends and influencing those plays with that activity. And Cousins gets it to go. He's got 10. Such a big part of what he does for this team, just work and work on the boards, generate second chance opportunities, and hopefully convert. Harden against George. Trying to go for an alley-oop, but excellent defense and anticipation there to stop it. And Rondo gets it to go on the assist from Leonard. Rondo's got the lead up to nine now for the Clippers. 27 seconds left in the first half of basketball. KD finds Harden. And the pass to Irving. Inside, Harris. A good finish at the rack off the slick feed. Yeah, put some students in the classroom because that's exactly how you move the ball. Kyrie terrific at spotting the open man, and then you got to get it to him. A deep three from George. A chance there to push it to double digits, but it's off the mark. And the first half is now in the books. Clipper. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, folks. Ernie Johnson here with Kenny the Jet Smith. And the Clippers have the edge here at halftime. They've got the seven-point lead. <laughs> and that'll do it for our... And if you're just joining us in this one, first half is in the books. One half to go. You look at DeMarcus Cousins in this game, he has been everywhere. Yeah, it's been a great performance from him, really staying focused on quality shots. Yeah, this is showing that they're not going to play at anybody else's pace but their own. We've got Kawhi Leonard. Paul George is out there with Patrick Beverly. Then there's DeMarcus Cousins. And it's Oturu in at the four-man position. That's the group starting the second half for Teron Liu. Timeout called the Nets. I think we hear this a lot. It's almost too popular now to say good offense beats good defense. Being a defensive-minded player yourself, do you agree with that statement? Absolutely, Kevin. And, and the thing is, in today's game, when I played, there was an era, you know, you could hold teams in the 80s and 90s. Uh, you could go a quarter and keep them at 12, 15 points. You can't do that now. It's different. You've got to be able to, to win stretches of two and three minutes. Uh, and, and honestly, you're right. It, the offense does dictate far more, uh, but it doesn't discount the importance of defense. And it, if you still look at the, 
the reigning champs and the teams that have won titles recently, that's still one area that they're consistent in is their defensive approach. Love that pick and roll right there. DeAndre Jordan completes the play and very efficient at doing so. Beverly against Harden. The three from George. Hits the three-point bomb. George has got his third basket of the night right there. Another good play. This is how they built the lead. Calling on the right guys at the right time. Basketball IQ is something that gets talked about, but it's importance to a team showing up here, running plays that turn into scores. Just five to shoot. Harden dishes to KD. Rebound by the Clippers. And that's just enough defensive pressure on him to throw off that shot. I bet he gets a, a good look at it next time and hits it. Green, he's checked in for Jordan. George passes to Beverly. Back to George. Let's it go with a three. A shot missing. The Nets go the other way with it. Harden surveying the D. Katie against Cousins. And then Durant with the dunk. Not fair of a coach to send out one defender against Kevin Durant, skilled at fighting through whatever challenges the D wants to throw at him. George against Harden. To the inside. Here's Leonard. No good there. Some solid defense from Harris. Nets trail by eight. Here's Harden. And block. That one goes careening off the glass. And even three on three break. And Leonard has it in the corner. 17 foot shot on the way. The third quarter has not started well. Just one of four. Lobs up there for Durant. An emphatic LU jam. Well, we've all seen it. The mobility, the wingspan of Durant. Seriously, how are you going to stop him on an alley-oop? Just over two and a half minutes gone by here in the second half. Here's Leonard. And good. Got the English that time as it falls. Leonard's got four points now in the quarter. Now, the offense sort of works itself out to a lot of mid-range shots. And Kawhi getting dangerous from that spot. Here's KD. Oh, man. Fans, fans love that. Listen to that. I love that sound in the arena. And using all of his 7'5 wingspan, Durant turns backwards. George finds Leonard. 143 left to play in the third. Gets himself open and drills it. Leonard's got nine. And uh, kind of par for the course here, right? Coming through with a solid offensive game to help them get this lead. Harden outside. Bobbed up there for Green and stolen by Cousins. Feeds it to George. Kicks it to Beverly. Pass to Cousins. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. It's going to be on Kyrie Irving. Cousins with a great job of using the pump fake, exposing the ball, getting the defender out of position, and taking advantage. And Brooklyn making a change here. Jordan's checked in. Now Harden. Oh, and James Harden throws it down hard. And this is how a floor leader makes a statement. Harden just put the other team on notice. Jackson kicks to Kanon. Batum with the ball. Guarded now by Irving. Jackson passes to Kanon. Shot clock at six. Had the space there, but it's offline. And it's Irving with the ball for the Nets. Eight-point game from the low block. And it's Jordan. That time on the assist by Irving. He has six. Well, with the physical tools he has, Jordan's presence in the paint looms very large, and he knows to live there. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Pass to Kennard.
There's the dish to Batum. Harden against Jackson. And now Irving pushing it up. No one back to stop him. Well, they'll get another chance. And so it's the Los Angeles Clippers with their lead standing at six points here at the end of the quarter. And you have to credit their defense for the job. And with three quarters behind us, we start the fourth quarter in what is still anybody's ballgame. Nets trail by six. On the court for the Nets, getting the fourth quarter going. Green is out there with Griffin. Then there's Landry Shaman. Then there's Brown. And it's Claxton in at the five. And now, yep, this will be a gorgeous challenge. We thought that might happen. Triggering a review of the personal foul. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, personal fouls can be tough. The action is so fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology, Greg. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being able now. The challenge like this is something a lot of people have been hoping for. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined, Greg, to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. Here's Brown. Chalk up two there. Brown's got his first pass. I don't know what's happening defensively, but they're not putting up any resistance. Jackson passes to Zubats. Now, here's Kinnar. Back to Zubats. Got a hand on it. Griffin looking around. Here's Claxton. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the line. And the first one drops. Patrick Patterson. He's checked in for the Clippers. That one misses. Clippers leading by five. Jackson down low. He's covered by Shannon. Jackson dishes to Morris. Six to shoot. Inside, Patterson. The rebound by the Nets. Claxton's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Oh, Griffin in position. Oh, and they get in the way of the alley-oop. Not to be. Good play defensively. The rebound by Jeff Green. Nets trail by five. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Both teams will make substitutions. Harden outside. And we're about two minutes into the fourth quarter now. And he gets the bucket. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. George with the ball. This is it to Beverly. He kicks the Cousins. The shot comes out. Great D that time from Griffin. Harden right side. Oh, Griffin in position. Takes the alley pass and dunks it down. Yeah, check out the hops on Blake Griffin. Just one of those lethal alley-oop threats in the NBA. Beverly, the pass to Leonard. And he commits the intentional foul. Los Angeles making a switch here. Zubats is checked in. And then for Brooklyn, DeAndre Jordan's checked in for Griffin. Kevin Durant comes in for Jeff Green. And Kyrie Irving subbed in for Brown. Down to five on the shot clock. Kicks it out to Leonard. Here's Okuru. Los Angeles with another miss. That might not be the shot they want him taking, even with the D backing off. Harden the pass to Harris. And now run up the court. Leonard pushing it up. Now the pass to Zubats. Trying to end the drought. That's good. And it's Leonard with the assist. 
Leonard's got his third assist on the night. Well, with Leonard on the floor, the team's always going to function a little bit better as a whole. And some of that comes from his unselfish play. Harden the pass to Irving. Can't tie it up as that one's no good. Well, he wants to shoot his way out of this cold spell, but the struggles continue. Well, he's got to move on, forget about this sequence here, and, and try to find a way to get on the board. Fourth quarter of play, and over three and a half minutes have gone by. And a wide open look for Irving. Controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. Uh, DeAndre Jordan has seen these moments before. Not usually the guy called upon, but man, delivering in a big spot. George against Harden. Takes the 13 footer. Here's Zubac. It's in! Well, he takes care of salvaging that possession for the offense by getting on the offensive class. On the wing, Irving. 46 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Gets the three-pointer to fall. That is world class. Love seeing that there. A huge possession, and he nets it. We can probably expect to see him slow it down now. Yeah, I think you want to milk your possession. Beverly, the pass to Zubac. Leonard inside. Harris is there. And Jordan sends it back. And Jordan, a defensive stalwart, crushing the opposition with his shot blocking. And so it's Irving. He brings it up. Oh, oh. oh that's an old-fashioned rim wrap. Uh, just a remarkable gem. These fans' jaws are on the ground right now. Pass to Beverly. Outside Leonard. Got it up in time. Oh, it's off the mark. And we're going to overtime. And regulation now complete. We will go to overtime. These teams have battled tooth and nail for four quarters, and now we head to overtime. Should be a blast. Here we go. Tip-off goes to the Clippers. And so they have the first opportunity on offense right here as we begin overtime. Courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineup for us now in overtime. And Brooklyn, look at who they've got. Duran is out there with Harris. And it's Kyrie Irving. Then it's Harden. And it's Jordan in at the center. And the jam by Harden. And I just love how aggressive Harden is inside. When he's deep like that, he is ready to finish with authority. George passes to Zubac. Leonard on the wing. A special move before the shot. Leonard's got the game tied up here for the Clippers. And who do you call when you need a big bucket for this team more and more? It's Kawhi. Harden outside. In the corner, it's Harris. It up for Jordan. A line to stop the alley -oop. Well, that's where they look to him most. DeAndre Jordan with arms that go on for days. Just toss that ball anywhere, and he knows what to do with it. And George kicks to Zubac. Pass to Morris. Nice passing here by Los Angeles. Six on the shot clock. Here's George. Leonard trying to break free. And he hits it just before the shot clock expires. Paul George stepping up big time. We're in overtime and 90 seconds gone here in what has been a great one so far. Passes it to Irving. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. They've led by as much as 10. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose, Greg? I'm not sure. And a scene of confusion right there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. DeMarcus Cousins, he's checked in for Zubox. Here's Leonard. A miss that time would have put him up. And that's have gone two or three from the four as we've gotten this overtime period underway. Good! Well, Kyrie's resume in these kind of moments is full.
They've been trailing for a few minutes. But that could change right here. Harris against Leonard. He feeds it to Cousins. Here's the pass to Morris. Got it! He has tied up this game. Oh, what a shot. The important points for Morris. And when he's feeling it, he'll step up and take control. And here's Harden. Jordan trying to free himself up. Good! And they do have a foul to give. And here is Los Angeles now. Can't afford any wasted possessions down the stretch. Nope. Every opportunity here have to have flawless execution. Here's Leonard. No good. Good job on the glass there, working hard to establish a position and put himself in a great spot to come away with that rebound. And so it's Brooklyn who scrapes by with the win. David, thank you as always. And that's going to do it tonight, folks. For our
Some minutes to make up for with an injury in their roster. They're missing a quality player. Injuries a big part of the game. They just got to make the adjustments. And the Clippers starting five. They've got Morris, Patrick Beverly out there with Paul George. Then there's Demarcus Cousins, and it's Leonard in at the power forward position. And for Milwaukee, Middleton and Giannis are the forward tandem. Dante DiVincenzo, he's out there with Holiday, and it's Lopez in at the center, locking down the middle. Just two to shoot. Holiday dishes to Hudson Skumbo. Misses from close range. Out of character for him to miss that shot. Maybe just a little too casual there. Here's Beverly. Leonard looking over the floor. Fires for three. Not going to go that time. And Milwaukee will come the other way. Middleton the pass to DiVincenzo. Great tee that time from Leonard. The defense ready for him on that possession. They had to be because he is so strong in the paint. And, and Smitty with LeBron getting into his late 30s. KD coming off the Achilles. For your money, is Kawhi Leonard the best player in the world? Great question. I know one player, the Greek Freak, might have something to say about that. No less than Michael Jordan himself called Kawhi the best two-way player in the game. That's a very strong endorsement from MJ. And so the Los Angeles Clippers get the first points of the ballgame. Pass to Middleton. To the middle. And Anadokounmpo with the basket on the assist by Middleton. And I really marvel at the touch of Antetokounmpo for his size and physique. That's incredible. Now here's Beverly. And there's the pass to Cousins. Back to Beverly. And the layup's good off the glass. And don't kid yourself about Cousins. He has the ability to see the whole floor. And he's willing to share the wealth. Here's Giannis. Pass to Holiday. Now DiVincenzo. Tries again. Kicks it down to Middleton. Morris with the rebound. It can be a little disheartening when you do everything right and come away with nothing. And it's George missing. The Bucks have gone just one for five from the field to start the quarter. Kicks it down to Middleton. Three-pointer. The Clippers grab the miss. Nobody near Leonard. No good on the triple. And here's Giannis. He'll bring it up for the Milwaukee Bucks. Trailing by two. Yes, that goes in. Playing with high energy, outworking the defense up the floor. And I just love it when the fast break results in a high percentage look. Not always the case these days. And here is Los Angeles now. Following the bucket by the Bucks. George with no one around. And again, it's the Clippers missing. The Bucks have gone just two of seven so far. A little bit of a slow start for them. It's stolen by Morris. Beverly, the pass to Leonard. Now the Bucks moving it up. And here they go. Lopez finds DiVincenzo. The kick out to Holiday. Here's onto Takumbo, and they take the lead. When you've gained a decade or more of experience, this is what tends to happen. Holiday stand very patient, waiting for someone to break free. 
Now, here's George. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Morris outside. But three. Los Angeles needs to get off a shot here. Here's Leonard. Misses off the right iron. Both sides attacking. That was good defense versus good offense. A shot by Middleton. Wide open. And a miss there on the triple. Los Angeles has gone 0-3 from three-point land. Nothing yet going outside. Cousins. Cousins on the follow. You see the feel from DeMarcus Cousins. Tracking down the miss, then making good on the second chance opportunity. Now here's Middleton. Outside Holiday. Back to Middleton. Jacks up a three. Yes, and it's Holiday with the assist that time. And that's exactly what he's looking for, draining the triple. Six-second difference between shot and game clock. Out of bounds. Milwaukee takes possession. Big group substitution here for Milwaukee. Portis, he's checked in for Lopez. P.J. Tucker comes in for Antetokounmpo. Pat Connaughton, he's checked in for Chris Middleton. And it's Bryn Forbes in for Dante DiVincenzo. Now here is Holiday. Passes to Forbes. Let's it go from deep. I like when Kanar hustles on D. He's capable of making a difference. At the end of one, a closely contested game so far. Bucks lead by three. And we'll be back shortly for the start of the second quarter. And some good action in the books as we get back to the game that's been pretty close here so far. And look what we've seen from Milwaukee. What do you think, guys? Yeah, in that first period, they look to push in transition at every opportunity. That's their mindset. Attack, attack, and attack some more. You're not going to beat them playing soft. And now brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset our lineups. Taking a look at Los Angeles. We've got Reggie Jackson. He's out there with Luke Kanon. And it's man in at the three, the small forward. Now T. After the miss three from Reggie Jackson, and the call will be against Luke Kennard. That is his first foul of the game. Patterson, he's checked in for the Clippers. Right side, Portis. Kennard with the ball. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. A lot of great talkers over the years, trash talkers on the floor in this league. Do you think they do it more to get themselves going, Greg, or do they do it with the purpose of getting under their opponent's skin? Hey, Kevin, that's a great question, and believe it or not, you see both. I've seen guys who do it to get under your skin, and I've also seen guys that do it for their own benefit. That's how they derive their confidence, and so... Uh, it's about you figuring out what works for you. I've seen some guys, they don't say smack. They don't, they don't say a word during the course of the game, but they will cut your heart out. So it's just about what fits your personality in terms of making you play your best. Well, I'm glad you don't trash talk here on 2K, Greg. I'll tell you that right now. No, we don't do that. <laughs> and the shot goes down. Portis has got his first two points of the night. Bobby Portis has the ability now to hit shots on all three levels. Kennard kicks to Jackson. Pass to Oturu. Shoots. And he tries off the glass, but it's no good. Hansa Takumbo dishes to Tucker. Teague against Jackson. Outside, out of the Kumbo. Bucks passing it around. Stolen by Jackson. And for those of you just joining us, we're almost two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Got a piece of it. Great size by Bobby Portis. Would love to see him block more shots, but he got all of that one. And that's a foul. It's called on Reggie Jackson. That's his first foul. And some changes here for the Bucks. Chris Middleton's checked in for Ida Kumbo, And it's Bryn Forbes in for Jeff T. Zubats is checked in for the Clippers. The pass to Mann. 
Jackson deciding where to go with it. With a floater, he takes it up and lays it in. If you play Reggie to take it all the way, this is what he can do. Quick floater over the top. Milwaukee leading by three. And at his peak, Reggie Jackson is one of the better guards in the league. He's still got that confidence. Yes, he does. Injuries slowed him down, but still able to create his shot anytime he wants. Here is Forbes. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Wow, that's one you just kind of assume is going in. Tough luck. Kennard for three. And Chris Middleton pulls it down. For Milwaukee, they've gone two or six in the field in the second quarter so far. Oh, taking it to the rack with power. Hammering down the two-hand slam. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Outside Jackson. Banked in off the glass. Jackson's got his second bucket of the night. This is what you get from Reggie Jackson now. Powering through contact and has the focus to complete the play. Forbes the pass to Middleton. From deep. Misses for the fifth time this game. Mark him at one for six. Frozen. Guys just ice cold, unable to contribute offensively. Man can hit. They can go two for one. It's about being smart right now. Portis. And Portis throws it down. Cutting his teeth in the Spurs system, Forbes has improved at keeping his eyes up and finding the open band. Zubac the pass to Kennard. There's 21 seconds left to play in the first half. And the shot is long. Definitely got to use the clock here and get the last shot. But you know, this is where your patience is tested. If you shoot too quickly, you give your opponent a chance to close out the quarter. I tell you what, it's, it's almost like stealing to watch how he plays the game from this seat. Jackson from long range. He can't get it to go. The clock runs out. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, a competitive matchup for Milwaukee in the first quarter. They didn't get more than a one possession. And that should... And we've got third quarter of basketball for you. Two quarters in the books. Bobby Portis with a strong contribution so far in this one. Yeah, and just look at the numbers from the first half. He has been very efficient. And it's not like everything's been at the rim. There's been a number of jump shots along the way. Giannis is the four with Lopez the five. Dante DiVincenzo, he's out there with Holiday. And it's Middleton in at the small forward position. They're the group for Mike Budenholzer starting the second half. A multi-talented scorer with range. You want to get Leonard as many touches as possible. DiVincenzo, the bounce pass. Lopez inside. Cousins is there. Bucket is good. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Beverly dishes to George. Fires the three. And again, Los Angeles with the triple. Yeah, that's two bombs in a row from long range. And here's Holiday, who will bring it up for Milwaukee. Three-point lead. Here in this third quarter, just over a minute play. And it goes out of bounds. That one's off Holiday. No clue where that pass was going. That is a brutal turnover. Los Angeles has gone two of two from long range in the third quarter so far. George passes to Beverly. And here is Cousins to the paint. Here's George. That's tipped. Holiday left side. Down low. And out of the Kumbo with the basket on the assist by Holiday. Holiday's got his third assist on the night. Now Beverly. He kicks it to Morris. 
Leonard the pass to Beverly. Now Cousins. Outside, George. Five to shoot. And good that time. George has got five points in the quarter. Facing up from mid-range, George could have tried to drive, but takes what the defense gives him. And guys, even though he's in a big market, Kawhi Leonard still not one for the spotlight. <laughs> that is so true. It's not about the fame for him. He's in L.A., but Kawhi Leonard stays in his bubble. All the trappings that come with being a great player, he's truly focused on the love of the game, winning and being the best possible player he can be. Now here's Cousins following the shot by Drew Holiday. And the wide-open shot for Morris. That doesn't go on the chance to tie. And they haven't been able to turn it into a big lead, but their rebounding advantage is starting to add up. Even Chenzo passes to Antetokounmpo. And they double up Giannis. Takes it down to Middleton. A three ball. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. It's tipped. Beverly finds Cousins. It's a nice passing here by Los Angeles. And Leonard gets it to go. I, I love the ball movement there. He put that on a silver platter. Just served him up. The Bucs have gone 2 of 4 here to start the second half. Third quarter action in just under three and a half minutes have gone. And here's Holiday. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Here's onto Takumbo. Yes, and it's Holiday with the assist that time. Holiday's got his fourth assist in this one. Now here's Leonard. 107 left in the third quarter. Now the dish to Morris. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And a guy who's bounced around the league a little. Surprising given that Morris is a solid shooter and a pretty good defender and rebounder. Antetokounmpo's checked in for Milwaukee. Milwaukee in the lead. Holiday looking over the floor. Pass to Giannis. Back to Holiday. It's Antetokounmpo on the wing. Pass to Antetokounmpo. Milwaukee needs to get off a shot here. He's off on that one. And the Clippers will go the other way with it. The feed to Morris. On the wing, Jackson. Pass to Oturu. On the wing, Morris. Back to Kennard. Shoots over DiVincenzo. Outside for Jackson. Back to Zubac. For the lead, the shot misses. We're at the end of the third, and we've still got a close one. Bucks lead by one. And we're... And while we can now, let's take a look at today's State Farm assist of the game. And he sliced the D wide open with this feed. They had no chance to prevent that basket. Creating plays for others. It's an art form, but it's also a discipline. Fantastic job. Well, this has been a great contest so far, and I imagine the fourth quarter could have even more action in store for us. And on the floor for the Clippers here in the fourth, Kennard is out there with Reggie Jackson. Then there's Patrick Patterson. Then it's Ivica Zubac. And it's Oturu in at the four. Clippers trail by three. Jackson with the bounce pass. Here's Kennard. Inside. And the dunk by Zubac. Nice find by Luke. Shows good vision in both half court and in transition. Holiday with it. Right side, Portis. And he drops in the layup off the glass. And the Bucks lead by three. 
And the D not really doing its job there. A little slow to react to the ball getting into the paint. Outside Jackson. And it's Zubats atop the key. Kicks to Patterson. Knocked loose. One on one here. Here's Connaughton. And he makes no mistake on the slam dunk. And you've got to wonder just how big those points are going to be. A swing like that could decide the outcome. Canard of the pass to Zubats. And we have an intentional foul there, GA. I uh, wish I could say why. <laughs> that one's pretty strange. I mean, no idea what got into his head right there. Here's what Milwaukee's going with right now. Antetokounmpo's checked in for Bryn Forbes. And it's Teagan for Drew Holiday. Milwaukee leading by five. Great offensive performance they're putting on. And guys, we call that the zone because that's where they are right now. They are in a zone, and I'm sure they feel unstoppable. And Tucker kicks the tee. Five on the clock. Back to Tucker. Rebound by the Clippers. Leonard's got four rebounds now tonight. And George, here we go. Count it good. So smart with the ball in his hands. George reads the floor well and takes advantage of what's there. We're in the fourth quarter here. Just under two and a half minutes gone. Portis, the pass to Teague. Portis in the post. Zubats defending. Teague for three. It's hauled in by Zubats. Zubats has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Outside Leonard. It's a nice passing here by Los Angeles. Zubats pitch to Beverly. Outside for Batum. It's stolen by T. Here's Antetokounmpo and the slam dunk by Antetokounmpo. And one great play leads to another with Teague. His fast hands and fast feet making things happen. George passes to Leonard. There's a minute 47 left in the fourth quarter. And he uses the glass on the lane. Can't help but love the way Leonard plays the game. Stone-faced assassin. The pass to Portis. Shoots over Zubats. It's hauled in by George. And they go to the intentional foul. Really no idea why you're fouling in a situation like that. You know, maybe there's some bad blood between those two. A platoon swap here for Milwaukee. The Clippers also making some changes. DeMarcus Cousins is checked in for Zubats, and Morris subbed in for Nicholas Platoon. Puts one up from 19. Los Angeles with another miss. Bucks leading by three. Leonard with the steal. Beverly the pass to Cousins. That shot brings them to within just one. Big time basket at a big time moment. This is why we all watch. The NBA is about these moments. Pass to Giannis. And the basket is good, and he's got a chance. Shot and good. here we go. A coach's challenge has been initiated. We'll have to now review the personal foul in question. And this is the time now where the officials can review in closer detail what constituted the original personal foul. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Greg, indeed, and the one thing with replay review is that when you see the slow motion replays, you really get a new appreciation for just the immense speed at which these players are moving and how fast the action really is and, and how hard it can be sometimes, you know, Greg, to, to make the right call. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined, Greg, to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. 
So a close game sees Milwaukee taking this one. What a show they put out here at home tonight.
Short a rotation play. Nothing that uh, they can't overcome. Go. But it does shrink their margin for error just a bit. Compensating for the absence of a key player can be difficult, but they've got to hold strong. So the Nets starting five. Harris is out there with Durant. Then it's Harden. Then there's Irving. And it's Jordan in at the center filling out the middle. And for the Bucks, Giannis is the four with Lopez the five. Holiday out there with Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Middleton in at the three set. Look at this little fella going in there and eating up some glass. And here is Irving. From deep. And the rebound. 
rebound goes to Lopez. And I thought that was going to drop. It looked good from here. They get it back. Takes it down to Middleton. Even Chenzo passes to Holiday. Shot clock at six. Here's Giannis. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Now the outcome tonight, Greg, could come down to the big man up front. You know, versatility will be key. The front court that can be physical but also pass it, stretch the floor, will likely be the victor. And so the Milwaukee Bucks get the first points of the ballgame. And with the ball out of bounds, Jordan touched it last. That is just a careless turnover. You've got to be smarter in those exchanges. The Bucks have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Giannis kicks to Holiday. First quarter, about a minute and a half in. Antetokounmpo passes to Middleton. Antetokounmpo inside. KD's on him. Got him with the pump fake, but couldn't finish. Just one of four from the floor. Not the start they were looking for here. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. That is the perfect fast break, guys. Getting a hoop before the defense can get set. Now here is Holiday. And Middleton kicks to Lopez. For three. Middleton can't get it to go. You know, right now they're just one for five. Rough start so far. So they take the lead. And, you know, Harden's exceptional, Nick. Getting out on the break in transition. I mean, running exactly the right path and getting it done. Here's Giannis. And onto Jacumbo slams it in. I tell you what, you better watch out, fellas. He is on fire here today. And we all know what can happen when he gets rolling. A hot start can turn into an explosive scoring night. Now here's Harden. It's thrown by to Takumbo. Even Shenzo with it. He's picked up by Irving. And the foul is called. He intentionally grabbed him there for some reason. I don't know. Kevin and Kevin, all I can think of is that he's trying to slow the game down a little bit. Right. That's a stretch, though. Definitely a strange move on his part. Here's what Milwaukee's going with right now. And folks, the coach's challenge has been initiated for a personal foul. Close game like this, and he thought it wasn't a good call. And this is the time now where the officials can review in closer detail what constituted the original personal foul. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Greg, indeed, and the one thing with replay review is that when you see the slow motion replays, you really get a new appreciation for just the immense speed at which these players are moving at and how fast the action really is and, and how hard it can be sometimes, you know, Greg, to, to make the right call. And so the word is in. They've decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And, you know, even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call, you got to acknowledge the efforts being put in to reviewing it. With double checking, and the game continues on. Irving finds Jordan, and they call the foul, so a chance at the line for one more coming up. Boy, I tell you what, the defender did a good job trying to challenge that shot, but Jordan's strength caused him to create the foul. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. Forbes the pass to Giannis. Rebound, Brooklyn. It's tipped. That's out of bounds. Brooklyn will retain possession. Risky pass there. They're lucky to retain possession this time. And we're approaching about three and a half minutes played in the first quarter. Here's KD. Rebound Giannis into the Kumbo. The Bucks have gone just two of seven so far. A little bit of a slow start for them. And off target as he starts the game 0 for 1. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. It goes on Giannis Antetokounmpo. You know, overall now, in terms of defensive strategy, sending Jordan to the line is not as effective 
as he used to be. He's improved as a free throw shooter. Looking at who's out there now for the Bucks. Bobby Portis has checked in for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo comes in for Chris Middleton. And it's Teague in for Bryn Forbes. Yeah, good job to take it right at the deep. Yeah, really left him no choice there. I mean, he had to foul and keep him from converting the easy bucket. And it's Harden with the ball for the Brooklyn Nets. They trail by one. And that corner three, a cornerstone of P.J. Tucker's game. Takes and makes them as much as anybody in the league. And, Greg, how about this little factoid? Back at the University of Texas, he only shot four triples in three seasons. Floor spacing was not a part of his game. It was about getting that thing in the paint. But to his credit, and it's an example for all young players, through hard work, that short corner has become his bread and butter shot. Talk about a total transformation from no threes to being a dead-eye corner three shooter. Here's Portis. That shot, no good. And it's the Nets taking it the other way. Eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Here's Harden on the win. And stolen by Portis. Here's onto Takumbo. Rebounded by the Nets. Jordan's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And it's Durant that time on the assist by Jordan. You know, big guys like Jordan who can facilitate are really valuable. Spots the open man and gets it right to him. Outside Portis gets it off. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall. And we've reached the end of the first quarter. Net. And if you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter in this one. And looking at what we've seen so far from the Nets, what do you guys think? Well, in that first quarter, they were intent on just pounding the ball down low. Yeah, and it's worked. They've got a clear edge and points in the paint. Now we'll see if they go with a more balanced attack or just keep on pounding it inside. E.J. Tucker is out there with Portis. Then there's Dante DiVincenzo. Then it's Holiday, and it's Connaughton in at the three. That's the group for Milwaukee right now. Bucks trail by seven. Now Holiday, nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. On the wing, DiVincenzo. And he gets the whistle three. for the three-second call. Brooke Lopez is checked in for P.J. Tucker. Brooklyn leading by seven. Shamit with it. Pass to Brown. There's the dish to Green. Just five on the clock. Another shot. Here's Claxton. Rebounded by the Bucks. Here's Connaughton. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Set him up well there. Brooke Lopez showing his vision and willingness as a passer. Now, here's Shannon. Guarded by Holiday. A shot by Griffin. Nobody around. And the Nets miss again. Bucks trail by five. The importance of the three-point shot never greater than right now. And in your eyes, there are some players who are just absolutely dead, solid, perfect from distance. No doubt about it. And, and you know, there's three guys to me, though, that kind of separate themselves. Uh, and it's one because you have to honor their ability equally off the dribble from three and at attacking the paint. Steph Curry, James Harden, and Damian Lillard. Those three guys can all hit pull-ups and step backs from range off the dribble. Uh, they all got great vision, you know, so they can take advantage of defenses that get caught loading a little too much. And then they also are terrific at the in the paint at getting to the free throw line. So those are the three guys I think that create the most havoc uh, when you start start talking about having to guard the three point line. Now the Bucks moving it up. Here's Connaughton. He has six. Back to Tucker. Teague finds out to Takumbo. It's hauled in by Brown. 
Brooklyn leading by three. Here's Irving. Finished off the break. Boy, that's exactly how you punish a team in transition. Kyrie getting out in front and going straight on the attack. Teague, the pass to Connaughton. He hits Porter's atop the key. From the top of the key, he buries it. Guys, that's just really unstoppable. He poses a ton of matchup problems for whomever he's facing. Passes it to Brown. One fifty-six left in the first half. And the three off target. The Bucs have gone three of their first five shots to drop here in the second quarter. Left side, Portis. Teague, the pass to Connaughton. It's Kumbo on the wing, headed by Green. Teague can't hit. You know, defensively, you just can't afford to give him that much room. They're fortunate that he missed that one. And it's in there. Griffin's got his first bucket in this one. Boy, his IQ is one of the best in the league. Irvin has a great feel for when his teammates are open. Connaughton passes to Portis. And Griffin sends it back. And he gets it back. Yep, that one goes. Portis has got his second basket of the night. Yeah, how about the purpose with which he's crashing the backboards right now? Some hard-earned second-chance points. To the inside. It's stolen by T. And it's the Bucks on the break. Trips down the breakaway slam. Love the aggression from Teague there to disrupt the passing lane. Leading to a basket in transition. Great play. Outside Irving. That shot off. Now the Bucks take it the other way. Portis in the post. Defended by Griffin. Portis can't get it to go. The defense ready for him on that possession. They had to be because he is so strong in the paint. Brown, good. What a find by Griffin. He's a lot more skilled as a passer than he gets credit for as far as power forwards go. He has terrific vision. Outside Portis. There's the triple. Brooklyn with the rebound. A slam by Blake Griffin. And that speed and athleticism of Griffin, a lethal combination when he's on the break. And some good action through the. Thank you, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of action following halftime. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Good to see you back here. Brooklyn found themselves in a close game in the first. At its highest, their lead topped out at five points. They're in good position at the half after a second quarter. That and that should. We've got second half action for you. And if the next couple quarters are similar to the first, this one could go down to the last possession. You look at Anadokounmpo really making a difference here. And even with the defense shading towards him on every trip down, he still finds a way to come up big. Well, we're not surprised by that. No more than what we've come to expect of him. He can adapt and adjust to anything a defense tries to throw at him. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the second half of basketball. And Brooklyn, look at who they've got. We've got Harden. Harris is out there with Durant. Then there's DeAndre Jordan. And it's Irving at the shooting guard. Really left alone that time. Now, here is Irving. For the three. Rebounded by the Bucks. Giannis has got four rebounds in this game. And the pass to DiVincenzo. Little over a minute gone here in the second half. Out to the Kumbo. No good. Yeah, and that was lining up to be a huge alley-oop, but they just couldn't quite connect. And you know, guys, always a tough catch on the lob. Placement and timing have to be close to perfect. And now let's revisit that exceptional mobile one block. And rent the plate perfectly. Gets himself in the air at the right moment. Terrific denial. Landry Shamitz checked in for Brooklyn. Oh, switch, 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 switch. 
DiVincenzo against Harden. Pops it up for Jordan. No good on the shot. Far from an ideal start here. I mean, this half just one for four so far. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose, Greg? I'm not sure. A, a scene of confusion right uh -huh. there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. Presence of mind, really important. You know, this game is more mental than physical. And Middleton is a guy who stays in the moment. He's exceptional at knocking down a good shot off a good pass. Here's Harden. And Harden with the stuff. And he can do a lot more damage to the rim than that when he wants oh, to. Oh, you're right. And with the lead they're enjoying, I'm surprised he didn't put a little something extra on that one. Well, I think he did plenty of damage nonetheless. I mean, it was only with one hand, but he still threw that down pretty hard. Oh, an aggressive move and fantastic finish. Mm -hmm. Trying to send a message with that slam, I think. That's exactly how you send it. Two hands and down. Shamit kicks to Harden. No good. Shot missing. Excellent D there from Holiday. Stolen by Durant. And wrestling for it there, but no one has possession. We'll have a jump ball. That's tipped, and so it's Milwaukee with it. And so Giannis will bring it up for the Milwaukee Bucks. It's a three-point game. That's a hand on it. Great positioning on the putback. Oh, and a nice job of turning that miss into two points on the tip end. Hustle points, I believe they call them. Hustle points right there. And great instincts, too, guys. Anticipating where the miss was going. And the officials will call the illegal screen right there. And those are the kinds of mistakes that are magnified when we're talking about a game down the stretch. Bryn Forbes, he's checked in for Milwaukee. Griffin's checked in for the Nets. Green comes in for Landry Shamit. Middleton outside for the lead. Milwaukee, no good that time either. Nets have gone two of six from the field here in the third. Good on the shot. And the Nets lead by three. You know, Greg, when you were in New York, you were on a super team of sorts. Compare that to the super teams they are forming now in the NBA. Oh, we've always had super teams. And this misnomer that this is something that's just come about with this year is, to me, absurd. You've always had it. Whether The difference nowadays is I think the players have more say in where they go. Uh, and they can orchestrate how a team is constructed. But it's always existed. And the reality is this. You become a super team when you win a lot. Sure. And, and that's what really dictates how super your team is. His shooting has been outstanding. <laughs> Definitely one of the reasons they're up in this game. 56 seconds left in the third. To the paint. Here's Antetokounmpo. Takes the assist and lays it in. Picked out the pass nicely. Just off the charts, incredible athleticism from Antetokounmpo. Bending off contact like a real pro. Harden surveying the D. Outside, KD. Lock at six. Green. Can't connect from short range. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on him. How about the court vision of Middleton? Just so good at finding the open man. Now a timeout called by Brooklyn. You have to like what we're seeing from Giannis Antetokounmpo. And he's just attacking the rim with force here. They need to try and deny him the ball in the paint to keep him away from the basket. A platoon swap here for Milwaukee. And a new group in for the Nets. Nicholas Claxton's checked in for Green. Luwawu Cabarro comes in for Kevin Durant. Brown is checked in for Harris. And Landry Shamit subbed in for James Harden. Great D that time from Portis. And here's Tucker. Right side, Portis. Over Griffin. Misses. 
Three quarters of play in a close game here. Milwaukee on top. And it's been a very competitive game so far as we get rolling here in quarter number four. Milwaukee in the lead. They've got Chris Middleton. E.J. Tucker is out there with Brooke Lopez. Then there's Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Forbes in at the one. That's the group for Milwaukee right now. Here's Tucker. And the dunk by Lopez. Lopez has got the lead up to three now for the Bucks. Because of that big body and seven-foot frame, Lopez, a handful to keep off the glass. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, completely a brain fade. I don't know where that came from. This lost sense of time and the situation. Looking at who's out there now for the Bucks. Bobby Portis has checked in for Lopez. Antetokounmpo comes in for Chris Middleton. Pat Connaughton, he's checked in for Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Teagan for Bryn Forbes. Now Teague. to Tucker. Beyond the arc. Can't hit that one. The Nets go the other way with it. Fast break. Here they come. Here's Griffin. And the dunk by Brown. Nothing soft about the putback there. And why chance it, right? Take the dunk if you've got it. Well, you know, if nobody's going to put a body on him, then that's going to be the result. Pass to Portis. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. And the Bucks lead by three. And Kevin, after being unable to find the net in the first half, they sure seem to be a different team here in the second. Exactly. I mean, finding their stride offensively, and they're on top on the scoreboard, and things are looking pretty good for them right now. And those plays can make a difference in a game like this. <laughs> well, you know it's going to fire up, Greg, everybody on that bench making a statement for sure. I mean, we'll see if they can maintain that aggressive approach, guys. Teague with a clean look. That three off the mark. And so Griffin will bring it up for the Nets. Here's Luwawu. That drops. And it comes off an assist from Griffin. Griffin's got three assists tonight. Teague with the ball. Side Portis. It's hauled in by Claxton. Claxton's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And now we've got the intentional foul. A big group substitution here for Brooklyn. Jordan, he's checked in for Nicholas Claxton. Kevin Durant comes in for Blake Griffin. Harris is checked in for Luwabu Cabarro. And it's Harden in for Brown. Irving passes to Harris. Jordan trying to free himself up. A nice shot by Harris. Harris has got his first bucket of the night. You know, really good to see Harris playing with that kind of confidence because, you know, these shots will only help him get better. Here's Hansen to Kubo. Banked in off the glass. Giannis has got 10 points in just the second half. Well, I tell you, the future of the Greek freak is extremely bright. I mean, he really has shown the ability to deliver in important spots of game. Puts the move on, and Harden, and the nice bucket inside. And the Nets lead by three. How good is that? Harden commanding the ball in these moments. Love stepping up at crucial times. Passes to Ronda Kumbo. He dishes it to Lopez. And there's the pass to DiVincenzo. Just five to shoot. Milwaukee needs to get off a shot here. And stolen by Jordan. And now the fast break. Irving with the ball. A tan short, but it's good off the front iron. And it's a five-point Brooklyn lead. And a breakdown here, guys. The hustle stats for the Nets. Their high-energy defensive effort has paid off for them, guys, with more than a few steals over the course of the ballgame. And, and also, how about the points they've gotten in transition for on the fast break tonight? That's been a huge factor as well. And here are the Nets. They're on a 12-4 run. There's a minute left in the fourth. 
three-pointer. Shot clock reset for the Nets. No problems knocking that one down. Relentless in their approach, even with the game firmly in hand. And, you know, until that final buzzer sounds, I mean, you've got to treat every possession like it's crucial. Here is Durant. Pass to Harris. Back to Durant. From downtown. And Chris Middleton pulls it down. Pass break, Milwaukee. Holiday surveying the floor. Yep, it's good. With deep range and a wide. All right, David, thank you. And that about wraps it up. We're
The activity in front of the Brooklyn. Both teams tonight dealing with some injuries. Here's a look at who's out for the evening. And with both teams at less than full strength, we'll have to see which side is able to remain more effective. Here are the five for the Clippers. Morris is out there with Kawhi Leonard. 
Then it's Patrick Beverly. Then it's Paul George and it's Cousins in at the center. And for Brooklyn, we've got Jordan. Harden out there with Irving. And it's Durant and it's Harris in at the small fold. A shot by Harden. Wide open. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. And the call will be against Harris. That's his first foul. We got a lot of talent in the front court tonight between these two teams, Doris. That's where a lot of the focus for us will be. We will have an opportunity to see offense being run through the low post. So the interior defense is going to have to be strong. Will you send an extra defender? Where will that defender come from? There's a lot to play out here tonight, Kevin. And so the Los Angeles Clippers get the first points of the ballgame. Harden surveying the D. Outside Jordan. For three, Harris. And the Nets miss again. Three straight misses to begin the game. Not the start they were hoping for. Morris, no good. For Brooklyn, they've gone 0 of 3 from the field to start the game. Out to Harris. And good. That's a friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. Well, catch and shoot. Is that Joe Harris' specialty? I think it is. And Joe Harris, the lethal shooter, he can also be a threat in the pick and roll game. Yeah, Harris does a great job reading what a defense is giving. He's more than just a catch and shoot type of player. Harris can hit shots on the move and isn't afraid to go at defenders. And here we go. Hart. Hammer it home! Hammer it home, baby! <laughs> that is authority right there. <laughs> Outside Leonard. Here in the first quarter with about two minutes gone by. Irving against Morris. Off the left rim and out. Leonard against Irving. And it's Leonard with the jam. Well, almost effortless there from Kawhi Leonard. The reach and leaping ability. Look out. First quarter of ball, almost two and a half minutes in. Outside Durant. Pass to Jordan. Shot clock at five. Over Leonard. He squares up and sinks it. And his presence as a scorer, it, it just has a calming effect for the rest of the team. He's a fallback option whenever they need one. Now, here's George to the middle. And Leonard gets it to go on the assist by George. Leonard's got his second bucket of the night. Paul George will force you to stay balanced defensively because if you have a miscue, he will find the open guy. Harden outside. And yes, it's good. Boy, you love what this guy is doing right now. He's taking smart shots, shooting a high percentage, starting to cook. Beverly finds George. Just under three and a half minutes gone here in the first quarter. And George with the stuff. This is how athletic Paul George is. An absolute monster around the rim. Al Harden. Now the pass to KD. Shoots the three. And it's rebounded by DeMarcus Cousins. For Los Angeles, they've gone four of five from the field so far. And it's Leonard missing. Brooklyn's gone 0 of three from three point land. Nothing yet going outside. And the jam by Kevin Durant. And while his ability to score gets so much attention, Harden demonstrating why he's also regarded as an elite-level passer. Now, here's Leonard. Cousins trying to free himself up. Kevin, he is tough to stop when he gets to the rim. Yeah, Greg, he can get up a few notches higher. Harden outside. Passes it to KD. Makes it off the glass. Durant's got six. And you can see he's got a little bounce in his step. Three out of four to start. The Clippers trail. Now 
now. Here's Leonard. Six points for him. Left side, Irving. Outside, Durant. Pops it up for Jordan. Listen, this guy is far from just a scorer. Kevin Durant loves to share the basketball. And that concludes the first quarter of play. Brooklyn ahead, up by four. 2K Sports back in a moment here in Brooklyn. And for those of you just tuning in, the second quarter of action is where we're at right now. And taking a look at the Nets' performance here, guys, uh, what jumps out to you, stats-wise? Yeah, in that first period, they look to push in transition at every opportunity. And why wouldn't they? You see their effectiveness in the open floor. Very difficult to slow down. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. Setting the floor for the Clippers. Kennard is out there with Jackson. Then it's Ivica Zubac. And it's Oturu in at the four. Oh, my word. I shouldn't be amazed anymore when Griffin pulls off a dunk like that, but I always seem to be. The man has some unreal moves above the rim. Now, here's Kennard. And he makes it look easy, dunking it hard with one hand. Go into the rack with energy. And the D, afraid to cut him off. Yeah, got to chalk that one up to some shaky defending. Yeah, and give him credit for taking advantage in a close game. Those are the types of plays that can swing things in your direction. And Brooklyn has possession. The Clippers get in the bucket. Claxton goes back up. Kennard with the rebound. Basket here gets them back in front. And it's been a long time coming, partner. Jackson passes to Kennard. Back to Jackson. And the dunk by Jackson. And with a quick first step, Jackson remains a threat to drive on any defender. Boy, Greg, there is a lot to like offensively for Luke Kennard. I tell you, he can shoot it. He's a crafty finisher and really improving as a passer. The question mark is the defensive end. 6'5 in height and wingspan. Not a lead tool, so he's got to get by on his instincts and his anticipation. Just no resistance on the inside. That's their fifth consecutive make in the paint. Left side, Jackson. Pass to Zubats. Here's Kennard. Just four to shoot. And good as it just snugs right down through the net. This guy plays with such confidence and ability to score in a variety of ways. Nice. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Pass to Claxton. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. Let's give some credit to the defense for how they're guarding this guy right now because they're refusing to let him get comfortable. Jackson passes to Mann. Here's Oturu. It's stolen by Brown. Oh, and here we go. Green's got it. The pass break chance. The pass to Claxton. Several lead changes going on here in the early portion of this game. It reminds me of that cameo song. Back and forth. And it's Jackson with the ball, bringing it up for the Clippers. Only giving up six here in this quarter. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. It's going to be on Blake Griffin. And, and Reggie Jackson, the former 24th pick by the Thunder, wasn't content to back up Westbrook. He basically forced his way out in search of a larger role. And a new group out there on the floor for the Nets. Here in the second quarter, just under three and a half minutes played. Harden kicks to KD. And he comes up with the deuce. And we've seen several lead changes tonight. Neither team giving an inch. And right now you love the chess match, right? The ability of each side to adjust to what the other is doing. 
Here's George. Kevin Durant picking up that last basket. George with the bucket. Well, Paul George has always had that aspect to his game. The mid-range where he can be efficient and effective is absolutely on point. Now, here is Irving. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. And you don't want to give up that kind of look too often. And Kawhi Leonard, one of the league's most dominant rebounders, doors from the wing position. Board man gets paid. That was his motto from back in high school and college. It's all about hard work and earning your keep, according to Kawhi. Well, you think back to draft day in 2011. It was quiet then. It became loud as his career went on. But the Spurs get the draft rights to Kawhi Leonard on that day for George Hill. Incredible. And Harris, wide open. He shoots. And there's Jordan putting it right back in. Jordan's got his second bucket of the night. What about the intensity? Go ahead, Mr. Jordan. We see you working out there. Jackson deciding where to go with it. And it's Leonard top of the key. Zubats in the post. Guarded by Jordan. Seven second difference. Shot in game clock. You, you almost have to assume he's going to knock those down when he is that open. Irving shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. So difficult to stay down on that pump fake. Irving sells it so well. All free throws good for Irving. And at the line, it's all about consistency with him. His routine, his stroke, it never wavers. And here's Jackson. And that'll do it for the first half. A competitive... Thank you, David. And we'll be back after halftime as the third quarter gets under. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome. Brooklyn found themselves in a close game in the first. They were never able to get the lead above four. They were out. And that's... Second half of basketball upon us. We may be in for an exciting finish based on how close of a game it's been so far. We've seen Kevin Durant really having a great game. And how about the amount he's contributing in the scoring column through two quarters? He has been terrific. And one would expect that the defense made some adjustments at halftime, but he has the ability to answer right back. Durant is out there with Joe Harris. Then there's Irving. Then it's Harden, and it's Jordan in at the five spot. So that's the lineup for Brooklyn. Boy, the wingspan of DeAndre Jordan. This guy sends it back with a message. Nice D from Cousins. The Clippers trail. Leonard inside. KD's on him. That one good for two. Greg, you've always said to have a winning team, you need franchise players. Talk about the specific qualities you look for in those superstars that can catapult a team to greatness. It's a great question, Kevin. Talent really isn't enough. You know, whether you lead vocally or by example, uh, the agenda has to be winning, and your best players really define who your team is going to be. So the franchise caliber player is a much-needed asset. Now, here is Harden. He's looking for Jordan and finds him. And DeAndre Jordan throws it down. When you think that this guy was so raw and so skinny coming into the league, now DeAndre Jordan brushing off these challenges with ease. Here's Leonard. 11 points in the game. And Kawhi Leonard with the slam. Oh, and he went for the two-hander on the slam using some muscle. Some urgency from him there. Sure. And uh, we're about a minute and a half here into the second half. Shot from 12. Back to Irving. Just five on the clock. Rebound, Kawhi Leonard. Leonard's got four rebounds in this game. Some nice ball movement by the Clippers. Morris dishes to Cousins. And too much time in the lane. They get called for the three-second violation. And, and you can 
can tolerate gas like that sometimes, but in a close game, man, I tell you what, that really hurts. Bruce Brown, he's checked in for the Nets. Harden finds Brown. Back to Harden. Over Beverly. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Maybe the best ever at earning free throws. I mean, Harden has mastered the art of contact and still being able to get off the shot. Green, he's checked in for Brooklyn. And here's George. He'll bring it up for the Clippers. Pass to Oturu. Morris kicks to George. Six on the shot clock. The Clippers need to get off a shot. This is one of the many things Paul George has done to help their offense. Effective ball movement. Well, we're into the third quarter. Just over two and a half minutes played. And stolen by Patterson. It's three on three on the fast break. George up top. Guarded by Hart. Oturu, the pass to George. Unloads from 13. Tries again. And oh boy, a lot of contact there. And yep, we thought we might see it. And the coach's challenge has been triggered on the personal foul call. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, personal fouls can be tough. The action is so fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology, Greg. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being able now. The challenge like this is something a lot of people have been hoping for. And so the word is in. They've decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And you know, even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call, you got to acknowledge the effort being put in to reviewing it. The double checking and the game continues on. Looking at who's out there now for the Nets. Nicholas Claxton's checked in for Joe Harris. Blake Griffin comes in for Kevin Durant. And Irving subbed in for James Harden. Now, here is Irving. Over Jackson. And again, no good by Brooklyn. And got to like what they've been doing down low in the post. Pass to man. Outside Jackson. Pass to man. Five to shoot. Zubats with it. Here's Jackson. And it's wide right. Hits off the rim. And here comes Brown. Leading the fast break. Comes up empty down low. It's all about the defense right there. Without that level of activity, he probably scores it. And that one is good. Jackson's got the lead up to five now for the Clippers. They're scoring boatloads of buckets. It's raining buckets from inside. Irving with a clean look. How good on the three. Oof, this has been brutal. I mean, he still hasn't made a single shot. No wonder they're struggling. For Los Angeles, they have shot six or seven at the line. Yeah, and 79% from the line as a team a season ago. Pretty reliable in that regard. The Nets have gone only one of six in the field in the third quarter. Not how they pictured the half started. Irving looking for an opening. A putback. Well, Kyrie Irving, if you're open, he will find you. This guy is a scorer, but he understands others have got to come along with him. Outside Jackson. Back to Kennard. For the three. Doesn't go that time. The Nets go the other way with it. Two seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Griffin shot is off. And the timing just not there on that attempted alley-oop. Just a missed connection, and it happens. I'm sure they will go back to it if given the opportunity. For Los Angeles, they have knocked down eight of nine free throw attempts. I'd say those numbers read pretty well. 16 seconds left in the third. Moving against Jackson. 
outside Irving. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Oh, Kyrie dazzling on the drive. One of the best in the league at that. The third quarter comes to a close. Clippers ahead. They're up by five. Live from Brooklyn, New York, you're watching 2K Sports. And let's take this opportunity now to show you our State Farm assist of the game. And he, he may not be known as a pass-first guy playing out of the two-guard spot, but he shows here that he can dole out an assist or two when he needs to. Well, having multiple playmakers on the floor makes you a much tougher team to defend. And with these teams locked in a very close contest, this fourth quarter promises to be a good one. And on the floor for the Clippers here in the fourth, we've got Reggie Jackson. Kawhi Leonard is out there with Patrick Patterson. Then there's DeMarcus Cousins, and it's Bernard in at the two. And not the most common call you'll see in the NBA, but hard to argue that pick wasn't illegal. It is really difficult to get your feet completely set, to stay completely still. It's almost surprising to me that it isn't called more often. Landry Shamit's checked in for Kyrie Irving. Now here's Durant. Kawhi Leonard unable to get his shot to go. And once Harden has momentum behind him, watch out. The love. And here we go with the coach's challenge. Not surprised in a competitive game like this. And he's disputing the personal foul call. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, personal fouls can be tough. The action is so fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology, Greg. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being able now to challenge like this is something a lot of people have been hoping for. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined, Greg, to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. You've got to be prepared on the catch to release quickly. And Paul George does that as well as anyone in the league. Now, here's Shannon, defended by George. And there's a whistle. That goes on Landry Shamit. That is his first foul of the game. Los Angeles leading by five. Outside Leonard. Good for his sixth make in a dozen attempts, shooting 50% with that basket. How about the focus and locked-in nature of Kawhi Leonard? My goodness. Harden outside. And the rejection by Cousins. And the officials call him for a three-second violation. And here's Cousins. He'll bring it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. George looking around. Leonard attacking. Nets trail by seven. Pops it up for Jordan. Hammers the alley through. Well, we've seen this one or two times, have we not? DeAndre Jordan finishing end of the alley -oop. Nice. Leonard with the ball. And that one is off. Some solid defense there from KD. Harden kicks to Jordan. Shamit. Off target from three-point range. Los Angeles leading by five. Here's Leonard. The layup off target. It's really a tale of two quarters. Shot it so well in the last, but this one can't get anything to fall. Jordan's shot is off. And he thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense didn't give up on that play and cut him off. And they pick up two. Morris has got the lead up to seven now for Los Angeles. How about since he entered the league, Kawhi Leonard has tripled his assist average. What a good passer he has become. Now here's Harden. And Harden with the stuff. And this is what great players do. Harden understanding how to deliver in a big moment. Now Beverly. 
There's a minute 47 left in the fourth quarter. Outside for George. Morris outside. Pocket four. Up and in on the layup. And the Clippers lead by seven. Well, that's just stellar concentration from the talented forward. Marcus Morris effective at keeping his balance on these tough, tough finishes. Now here's Durant. Back to Hart. Back to Durant. Over Beverly. The putback. It's good on the putback. Uh, DJ with the fearless opportunity, boy. What a shot. Los Angeles leading by five. 105 left to play in the final quarter. Outside, George. Elbow shot. And the Clippers getting another bucket right there. Silky smooth jumper from Paul George, and he just lets it fly whenever he gets free from that spot. Open with it. Leonard picks him up. Here's KD. And it's going to be a goaltending call here, so they'll count the bucket. That's a very close call. I'm sure he thinks it's a clean block, but looks like it was on the way down. And Brooklyn making a change here. Irving's checked in, and there's the call on Kyrie Irving. That's his first foul. 43 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. George passes to Oturu. Now here is Morris. Jacks up a three. Jordan with the rebound. And looking for a very quick shot here. You've got to run a play that's a quick strike. You've got to immediately foul after that. Now George following the three-point attempt by Kyrie Irving. Outside, George. Here's Beverly. Six to shoot. Kicks it to Leonard. From deep three-point range. And so Los Angeles takes the win. This All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much. Well, folks, that's going to...
There's a look at downtown Los Angeles. And they'll have some minutes to make up for with an injury in their roster. Compensating for the absence of a key player can be difficult, but they've got to hold strong. Here are the starters for Milwaukee. Middleton and Giannis are the forward tandem. Dante DiVincenzo, he's out there with Holiday. And it's Lopez in at the five down low. And for the Clippers, Patrick Beverly out there with Paul George. Then there's DeMarcus Cousins. Then it's Marcus Morris. And it's Leonard in at the power forward. Now Beverly following Drew Holiday's three-point attempt. Outside, George. Let's the three fly. The rebound by the Bucks. And OKC Paul George show he could be an MVP caliber performer. With Kawhi on the Clippers, he could be that 1B or that 1A. And Cousins kicks to George. Leonard trying to break free. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. And right there, you see an underrated aspect to Cousins' game. Terrific instincts, senses the open man. Holiday dishes to Middleton. Passes it to DiVincenzo. Middleton. And staying with the play, Middleton. And that's a pure hustle play, getting to the offensive glass for the tip-in. And that's the kind of quality you see in any strong offensive rebounder, isn't it? And PG, you know, he has the versatility to succeed in different roles. Doesn't have to dominate the ball. Yes, and if anything, he's more comfortable scoring within the flow of the offense. With his all-around impact, doesn't need to force things to make winning plays. But if you need him to, he can now DiVincenzo. Kawhi Leonard missing from long range. 
Here's Lopez. Five on the clock. Cousins pulls it in. I'll tell you what. I think he thought that was going in. I sure did. Beverly against Holiday, and that one's good. Beverly. I like seeing Patrick Beverly attack the interior. Sometimes he becomes too perimeter oriented. Now here is Holiday. To the inside. They get a hand on it. Here's Hansa Takumbo. Nice move. He lays it in. And I really marvel at the touch of Hansa Takumbo for his size and physique. That's incredible. Now, here's George. Dishes it to Leonard. And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. Again, Los Angeles. And he's not going to miss many of those, especially that wide open. And early on, if you're him, you just want to see the ball go through the net and get into some kind of rhythm. Holiday against Beverly. Holiday gets the bucket. I know you appreciate this, Greg. So much of defense now is closing out on the three-point shooting and then protecting the rim. Consequently, pull-up jump shooters are super valuable. And there are a lot of good ones in the NBA right now. No doubt about it. And, and Kevin, you know, you think about a few guys. James Harden, I mean, he shoots that step-back three, but he's a guy that, because of his ability uh, to utilize your inability to defend that three-pointer, uh, Kyrie, Dame Lillard, those are some guys. Chris Paul still as good as anybody in that mid-range area. C.J. McCollum. These are guys that have really feasted and, and carved out a nice niche for themselves in the NBA because of that ability to take and make jump shots. And I love that list. You're right on it. Here's Jackson. After Drew Holiday's score. And he lobs it up toward the rim. Loses his grip and clanks the alley-oop jam. Tucker finds Giannis. Puts it up from 17. Milwaukee, no good that time either. Missed opportunity wide open for mid-range. He would love to get that one back. Here's George. That one falls. His second basket of the game. He's now two for three. Proving how dangerous he is. Give George these looks, and he'll knock him down. 50 seconds left in the first quarter. And we have an intentional foul there, G.A. I uh, wish I could say why. <laughs> that one's pretty strange. I mean, no idea what got into his head right there. Here's Connaughton. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. T kicks to Connaughton. Pass to Portis. And no good. And the Clippers will go the other way with it. And pushing it up, here's the Clippers. Oturu, the pass to Jackson. The burst of Jackson makes him a hard guy to stick with and difficult not to foul him. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the night right now. Really a, a good season for him overall last year when you look at the number, 83% from the line. Bucks trail by four. Teague, the pass to Connaughton. Left side, Portis. Aston Morrow. Teague against Jackson. From 11 feet away, Milwaukee. No good that time either. And that does it for the first quarter. But Clippers on top. They lead by four. Earlier, we checked in with Giannis Antetokounmpo, who had this. All part of the process of achieving greatness. Yeah, and most guys have had to go through it. The MJ, LeBron, leading a team to a championship rarely happens early on. And hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. Halfway through the first half in this one. And let's quickly break down the game we've seen so far from the Clippers, guys. What are your thoughts? You could see they were well prepared defensively coming into this one. Yes, what they do, they take away the things that teams like to do offensively. Also, keeping them out of sync. Luke Kennard out there with Jackson. Then it's Ivica Zubas. And it's man in at the three. 
They're the group out there for the Clippers starting the second quarter. And he jumped out to that ball immediately. Great reaction on that deflection. A little bit late there, but you tried to get into your opponent's head. Forced them to go somewhere else with the ball, and he did that. And it's a completely new group for Los Angeles. And here's Beverly. He brings it up for Los Angeles. They lead by six, their biggest margin. Back to Morris. Poked away and stolen by Portis. Here's Holiday, and it's blocked. At the point guard position, Patrick Beverly is a great shot blocker. Clippers leading by six. Cousins inside, guarded by Holiday. Cousins, no good. And Smitty, you know what Pat Beverly is going to bring every night. A, a fearless, ferocious, at times almost sociopathic level of intensity. And this guy just does not take a possession off. You know, he's one of those guys I would have to question even playing with him. He plays so hard. I know I hate playing against him. Leonard attacking. That one doesn't go. And Milwaukee the other way now. Outside Holiday. And Forbes kicks to Holiday. Forbes dishes to Tucker. Back to Forbes. Holiday against Leonard. The kick out to Holiday. Up again. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. That is really good work there on the offensive glass. For Los Angeles, they've gotten only one of their first four shots in the second quarter to drop. Now here's Beverly. T right on him. And an air ball on that one. Way off. The wide open look here for Holiday. They get the rebound. That one no good. The Clippers in the lead. And here we go with Morris. Running it up the court. In the corner. George with it. There's the pass to Leonard. And that one drops for him. Leonard's got his second bucket. Excellent pass, PG-13. Keeping his eyes up, using his vision. Passes it to Connaughton. And it's the Clippers with the rebound. Here's Beverly. Kicks it to Morris. Here's the three. Doesn't go for him. And close to making the defense pay for the lax coverage that time. Morris against Portis. Over Morris. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. Marcus Morris picks one up there. Speaking of Bobby Portis, he's going to fight. He's going to scrap. He's going to give you maximum effort every night. And it's a completely new group for Los Angeles. Big group substitution here for Milwaukee. Brooke Lopez is checked in for Holiday. Giannis comes in for P.J. Tucker. Chris Middleton's checked in for Pat Connaughton. And it's Dante DiVincenzo in for Bryn Forbes. Milwaukee's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Portis in the post. Patterson's there. And he gets the whistle for the three-second call. Drew Holiday's checked in for the Bucks. We have got to see that sensational mobile one block again. And he's all over that shot. Has it read the whole way and gets the position he needs to make a play. Zubats in the post. Lopez covering. Zubats, that's good. Zubats has got his second basket of the night. As the game has gone along, they've gotten more and more aggressive on the back. Now oh, here's Middleton. He's guarded closely. And it's Lopez at the elbow. Middleton the pass to Giannis. And that's tough by Giannis. So strong. Giannis has really added some bulk since entering the league. Helps him absorb the contact. 23 seconds left to play here in the half. Kennard, the pass to man. Shot clock at six. Here's 
Zubats and the rejection by Adetokounmpo. Here's Lopez, and Lopez throws it down. The underrated vision of Holiday. I like it when he's distributing, and I think it's... It's all tied here in Los Angeles. We'll see you back here. At it's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Greetings. A pretty close game for the Clippers throughout the first quarter. They were never able to get the lead above four. Thanks for joining And as we get into this third quarter, as we've seen so far, neither team able to create much separation on the scoreboard yet. Greg is a broadcaster. Who have been some of your favorite personalities to cover? Man, that's a great question. Uh, you know, most of the stars, it, 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 I'm a big fan of, of Duran and Steph and LeBron and those guys. Chris Paul's another one that, that's a favorite. Uh, so many other guys, you know, there's so much more personality and so much more confidence these, these guys have working uh, in front of the camera. I think that just makes for a, a better experience. Somebody asked me the other day, who was my favorite? You know who I said? Who was that? Greg Anthony. Oh, you're just saying that because it's true. <laughs> Our second half of basketball and presented by Gatorade. Let's see who's all fueled up and on the floor to start the third. And Milwaukee looking at who they've got. Giannis is the four with Lopez the five. Holiday out there with Dante DiVincenzo. And it's Middleton in at the three, the small forwards. You want your bigs playing big. Rips it down in traffic. Here's Morris. That's good, and it's Leonard with the assist. Morris has got it all tied up now for Los Angeles. I mean, a great look by Kawhi. Aware of what the defense is trying to do. Understands the spacing. Back to Holiday. The kick out to out of the Kumbo. Holiday against Beverly. Back to Holiday. The Bucks need to get a shot off here. And they turn over the 24 second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Hate to see that. I know everyone's mind is on the play, but you've got to protect the ball. Bryn Forbes, he's checked in for Drew Holiday. I'm glad we got to see the mobile one block once more. What a play. E emphatic with the rejection. You've got to appreciate that kind of forceful defense. Back to DiVincenzo. He dishes it to Forbes. I'm deep. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by George. Patterson, he's checked in for Marcus Morris. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for the Bucks. Pat Connaughton comes in for Chris Middleton. Connaughton kicks to Forbes. He feeds it to Lopez. The shot. Oturu with the rebound. Only one for four in this half. Sometimes it's execution. Sometimes the shots just don't go down. DiVincenzo passes to Connaughton. Knocks it loose. Back to DiVincenzo. Pass to Connaughton. Shoots over Leonard. And that one goes long. Ugly start to this half. Hitting just 20% from the field. Gotta pick it up. Patterson can't get it to go. Bucks have gone only one of five from the field since halftime. Very slow start offensively. The feed to four. Stolen by George. It's two on one. Leonard the pass to Oturu. For the lead. And Leonard gets it to go. Leonard's got six points. Aggressive D there. But then again, Kawhi finishes through contact almost as well as anyone. Down low. It's intercepted. Outside, George fires from deep. Here's Jackson. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. And they've had assists now on their last three baskets. Portis, he's checked in for the Bucks. Chris Middleton comes in for Brent Forbes. The homecoming for Paul George. Playing in L.A. with the Clippers. They gave up a King's ransom to OKC. 
five first-round picks and Danilo Gallinari and Shea Gilgis Alexander. That's the Zubats. Now, here's Kanon. Tight defense on him. And guys, the Clippers were willing to give almost anything for PG because they basically got Kawhi Leonard in the deal as well. And let's remember, G.A., he could have been a Laker. They would have had to trade away the second pick in the 2017 draft. That... And folks, the coach's challenge has been initiated for a personal foul. Close game like this, and he thought it wasn't a good call. And this is the time now where the officials can review in closer detail what constituted the original personal foul. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Greg, indeed, and the one thing with replay review is that when you see the slow motion replay, you really get a new appreciation for just the immense speed at which these players are moving and how fast the action really is and, and how hard it can be sometimes, you know, Greg, to, to make the right call. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined, Greg, to overrule the original call. And, guys, this is what it's called about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. Wow, defensively, for some reason, they've come out flat here in the second half. And the pass to DiVincenzo. 15 seconds left here in the third quarter. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Middleton. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. And you see Middleton on the perimeter a lot, but he's really been trying to add strength to that 6'8 frame so he can mix it up a little more inside. Middleton hits them both. He's living there tonight, a tough guy to guard without fouling. And the bonus, he's going to knock him down. The shot by George. Wow, and the buzzer Peters good. That might be a soul-crushing basket. What a shot to carry them into the fourth quarter. Well, we have the chance now, folks. Let's go to our State Farm assist of the game. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and what a beautiful feat. Fundamental basketball. Keep your eyes up. Keep the ball moving. You're going to keep the defense on its heels. And with three quarters behind us, we start the fourth quarter in what is still anybody's ballgame. Kawhi Leonard is out there with DeMarcus Cousins. Then it's Marcus Morris. Then it's Paul George. And it's Beverly in at the point. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Clippers. And George kicks to Beverly. George looking over the floor. Feeds to Cousins. And stolen by Portis. And Giannis pushing it up. No one back to stop him. It's just hard to match up with Antetokounmpo's speed, especially in the open floor. And here's George. He'll bring it up for the Clippers. It's a three-point game. Leonard on the wing. The dish to Cousins. Out to the right wing. Beverly the pass to George. Kept alive. Bucks trail by three. And to the Kumbo inside. Morris is there. On to the Kumbo. No good. He is so good attacking the rim. It's rare to see him denied like that. And it's George missing. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. And the dunk by Giannis. And if you're looking to make a big play with the pass, you've got to love Giannis. He's a big target on those alley-oop blocks. Leonard finds George. Releases from 15. George missing again. High percentage look for him. But bottom line, they're not all going to go down. Controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. And the Bucks lead by one. Talk about making halftime adjustments. You love what they're doing with him now offensively. Now Cousins. 
and he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Power move from PG-13. He's added a lot of muscle to his frame over the years, putting it to good use right there. Patrick Patterson, he's checked in for Los Angeles. And Milwaukee also making a switch. Lopez is checked in. Passes to DiVincenzo. Back to Holiday. The rebound by Patterson. For Los Angeles, they've gone 0-3 to start the fourth quarter. Here's George. A little over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth quarter. The Bucks trail. Now the Bucks moving it up. Here's DiVincenzo. And, and I like the fact that the defense is looking to protect the rim at all costs. And he knocks down the first one. Los Angeles making a switch here. Leonard's checked in. And he can't hit the second. He is definitely disappointed. He could put his team up in front, but at least he knotted this one up. And the wide open shot for Morris. Offline with his three. Bucks have gone three of seven from the four in the fourth. That's a 42% mark in the court. Lopez dishes to Middleton. Nice ball movement by Milwaukee. And again, the Bucks miss. Los Angeles has gone ice cold from three point land, 0 of 4 since the start of the final quarter. George with the ball. Now guarded by Middleton. Beverly feeling it out a bit. Back to Cousins. It's so about it's a Kumbo. And Giannis throws it down. And that move has become second nature for Giannis. Once he establishes position, game over. The Clippers trail. 121 left in the game. George passes to Leonard. The shot's good on the assist by George. George has got three assists now in this one. I mean, unbelievable. It's one thing to be talented, but Kawhi is clutch as well. Leonard against Andre Kumbo. Count it! That is world class. Incredible shot with everything on the line coming through for his team. George finds Leonard. Ties it from 19. It drops. A huge shot to tie it up. And he just seems to always deliver in the clutch. And, and he's got it going right now. That's who they want taking the big shot. 36 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Middleton against Leonard. And it's a Kumba. Money! And a big-time playmaker. When the game is up for grabs, give the rock to Giannis. Outside Leonard. Again, Leonard missing. Got a piece of it. Middleton outside. No good from outside. A three from Morris. So a close game sees Milwaukee taking this one. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that'll do it for...